Hey guys and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review and today's game up on the tabletop is Leaf by Weird City Games. These are the same guys that brought you Canopy. The designer for this one is Tim Eisner and it's a one to four player game, it takes about 30 to 45 minutes to play and it's for ages 10 and up. And in the game Leaf, you are playing as the spirit of the wind, flowing through the trees and dropping the leaves down onto the forest floor so that it is soon time for winter to come. Uh, in the game, you're going to be taking these cards, you'll be playing them down to then place the leaves from your leaf board onto the field, connecting point to point with other leaves. Each leaf has a unique distinct color that will give you specific actions based on the point of your leaves touching theirs. You'll be able to draw animal cards, which you'll then nest for winter. You will be able to move your squirrel up the tree, gathering victory points along the way. And you're also going to be gathering sun. Sun is a way in which you're going to move the season board across and end the game when winter hits. And of course, when winter hits, or if three of the leaf stacks are empty, the game will end. And you'll score points. You'll score points for climbing the tree, mushrooms on your leaves, uh, the winter den, and then your sun tokens and tree leaf cards left over, as well as any acorns that you have. Will you have the most points and be considered the best spirit of the wind possible? Find out in the game Leaf. Let's go ahead and take a look. To set up the game Leaf, the first thing you do is determine the number of players you're going to be playing with. And here I have an example of two players. Each player is going to get their own Leaf action board, and they're also going to be getting their own stack of mushrooms here. I have green, so I've got green mushrooms on a player board. In a two-player game, each player gets three Leaf cards to start. You'll be shuffling the Leaf deck and dealing out three cards to each player. And if you play four players, the first two players will get two cards, and then the last three and four players will get three cards. There are two main game boards in the game as well, the leaf board and the animal board. For the leaf board, go ahead and stack up each of the unique six different types of leaves and make sure that you place the leaf with the backside icon of a leaf on top so that there's a variance of different colors on the top of the game board. There's also two unique leaves, the green and the orange leaf here that have little spirals. You'll actually take those and place them connected just as you see here, uh, adjacent to each other as the beginning portion of the game board. The animal board over here is going to have an animal deck of cards that you shuffle and deal out five onto the board, as well as placing down this sun marker, depending on the number of players. In a two player game, I'm gonna place it right here on the second space. The next portion of game board is the tree here. And for each character, you're gonna give them a squirrel. We have red and green playing. So I place them on the start space on the bottom of the tree so that these little squirrels can climb up the tree to get to the top. Everything else is just stacks of stuff. You're gonna have acorns worth victory points. So you'll stack in piles of one, five, and 20, and then stacks of sun that you'll be utilizing to move along the game to progress to winter. After you've done that, make sure you have enough space in the middle of the board area in which you can place more leaves, give somebody the first player marker, and begin the game Leaf. Leaf is a very simple game to play. Basically, the first player is going to start by looking at their hand of cards, and each card in their hand is going to represent a unique leaf on the leaf board. I have a trident maple, a silver maple, and another trident maple. And on my turn, I'll be able to select one of these cards and play it. When I play it, I will select the top of the stack of that specific leaf, and I will place that onto the main game board so that its tips connect to the tips of other leaves on the game board. So if I wanted to, I could in fact select this silver maple, discarding it to the discard pile next to the green deck, look for the silver maple on the game board here, take it, and then I can go ahead and connect it so that all the tips are touching other tips of leaves. As, as long as you can manage to touch tip to tip, they're going to get value from that, which is basically an action for each tip of each leaf that you connect to. In this case, I place this red leaf attached to green and orange, so I'm gonna get two green actions and two orange actions. Each of the different actions are represented here on your player board that explains what the actions do. And there's a variety of different actions. You're gonna have green, orange, and brown, uh, yellow, and red. And I'll go ahead and cover them right now. So as you can see, I have two green tips being connected to my red leaf and two orange. So I'll get two green and orange. Well, green will let me actually draw a leaf card from the leaf deck. This lets me play more leaves in the game and it's important to have these because if you ever run out, you'll actually lose victory points get this negative three acorn and draw two new leaves. So avoid doing that if possible. 
The orange one is going to let you draw animal cards. Animal cards are found on this board here and they replenish every round and basically, or every turn I should say, and basically after you've taken the animals here, they'll refill and these are a way in which you're going to be able to score them during each frost that happens and of course at the end of the game past winter. The brown leaves are going to allow you to move spaces up on this tree here. You'll take your squirrel and move up on the spaces of the tree here and for each space you move up on, you're going to get the bonus associated with it. Move up three spaces on the brown tree, go ahead and collect two sun and an animal card. Then you have yellow. Yellow is going to let you get sun tokens. And if you have three sun tokens during your turn, once a turn, you can spend those three sun tokens to move the yellow sun marker one space to the right and score the acorns. If you ever move past a, a frost portion on that little board there, you will be able to actually take one set of animals and move it from your, uh, your, your leaf area uh, down to the winter den area. And you're trying to collect sets of the same unique animal, up to three and more if possible. And the last one is the red mushrooms. This is going to allow you to place down mushrooms from your little supply here onto any leaves that you would like. Or if you already have mushrooms on the board, you can actually use these actions to flip over your mushrooms to make them bigger, which you'll score more points at the end of the game for having connected mushrooms of the same color, but they have to be large. You also can gain bonuses as well when players play leaves on the specific leaves that you already have a mushroom on and let you get sun tokens. And the other aspect to your action, so other than just playing a card, you could choose to double up. You could actually go ahead and do a leaf boost. You can play two of the same leaf, a trident maple, I have an extra. So I'll play two trident maples. And when I place these guys down into the discard pile, I will select the trident maple, and then I will make sure that I connect it in some way, shape, or form. And once I've done that, I actually get to take one of my mushrooms and place it on that specific leaf that I placed down. So discounting a card will actually give you an extra mushroom when you do so. Uh, and that's basically how the game goes. Each time that you connect a leaf um, to your other leaves on the game board, you'll take the actions associated with the connected points. You're always going to want to have to draw new additional leaf cards because you never want to run out. And you're going to want to complete each of the new objectives in the game. Drawing leaf cards will let you play more and also give you that wonderful leaf boost. The animal cards, during each frost when that sun passes over, you're going to collect these animals at the top of your game board and move them down to your frost area, and you'll score points at the end of the game for each of your sets of animals. Uh, and in this case here, it's one for one point, two for three, three for six, and then if you get four, you'll get six points plus one more for each extra animal. So there's a sweet spot for everything in this game. The tree, moving up this tree here, for every time you get a brown, you'll move up on the tree, one space, you'll gain the benefit of that space, and you'll just check to see the symbols. The symbols are all the same. It's acorns give you a victory point, sun will give you a sun token, the paw will give you an animal card, uh, and if you ever get to the top here, you'll be at the highest height of the tree. Basically, at the end of the game, whoever is the highest on the tree will get six victory points, and the second highest will get three. Uh, the next thing is the yellow sun. Yellow sun is worth a little bit of points at the end of the game, but they're also, if you turn them in, three on a turn, and only once a turn, you'll move that marker there. It implements the frost, and it also implements six victory points, or five victory points, or even four, as you go pro progressively down the board here, for pushing this game along. And finally, the mushrooms. Mushrooms, of course, like I said, you will be able to place them on any of the leaves. And when players attach leaves to your leaf with a mushroom, you'll be able to score sun. But additionally, grouping adult mushrooms at the end of the game will score you victory points. One for one, two for three, three for eight, and four or more gives you one for each extra. So once again, three is the sweet spot. The game will end when one of two things happen, like I explained at the very beginning of the video. A, when the sun marker reaches winter. When it reaches winter, that'll have each player take one extra turn. And if you ever have extra sun that you'd like to turn in, you'll simply go ahead and gain those three points and it'll just stop there at the end. Uh, or the last option is when three of these sets of leaves get removed. And you'll see that when you remove a stack of leaves, this little winter symbol will appear which means that if there are two more, you'll progress to winter. If you ever play a leaf card and that card doesn't have a leaf associated with it in the stack here, they're basically gone, that card turns into a wild and you can take any leaf that you would like. 
And remember that color matters for placing later in the game, and the type of lead matters for placing now to gain the specific actions that you'd like, because depending on what you're trying to get will determine what leaf you're going to want to play. And there you go, that's the game. At the end, you'll score up all your points, get any bonuses for the extra sun and extra um, cards that you might have that you didn't use. And whoever has the most points is the winner of the game, Leaf. Yep, it's pretty simple. Leaf is a game all about collecting and placing leaves down on the game board and basically gaining actions as you do so. If you need sun, you'll need to connect to a yellow leaf. If you're going to need cards, you'll connect to a green one. And if you're lucky and you can connect to more than one or two or even three leaves, you'll score even more additional actions. The more actions, the better your placement, the better you're going to do in this game. Leaf has a sweet spot. And I mean that by each of the different unique scoring positions in the game are going to give you more for having a certain number. At three, specifically, you're gonna score the highest amount of points uh, in total value, but you always gain one more for each additional one that you place. And so you're going to be able to gain a good chunk of points for each of the different things. This is one of those games where it's not like you want to choose one specific path. You actually want to do a little bit of everything while existing in the forest is dropping leaves. Uh, animals, for instance, gathering three hedgehogs and then the frost hits and moving them down into their winter den followed up by gathering turtles or sparrows is going to give you points and you can only ever score three sets of animals. If you pull three hedgehogs and on the next round you pull another three, those three hedgehogs will get added to the other three, giving you a total of six hedgehogs, which means as opposed to doing two, three, and three, which would actually score you 12 points for having like hedgehogs and turtles, uh, if you did three hedgehogs and then three more, you would get six and then plus one, two, three, totaling nine. So you wanna actually get different sets of animals at three if possible. And even better is having three sets of animals at uh, four or even five animals. And the same is said for doing anything else pretty much in this game. If you want to collect for the mushrooms, you're gonna wanna have three adult mushrooms connected to, to each other. The one thing I'm not sure about in this game is if I can have separate sets of them. Can I have three in one area and three in another? Or is it all one singular where you get one, two, three, and then each connected one is just gonna give you a bonus one? Or can I score for multiple different sets that are not connected? In the rules, it seems like you can do that, but also based on all the other rulings, I'm gonna assume that you can't. So a small minor problem that I had because I just couldn't figure it out in the rules. Uh, the leaves themselves present a variety of choices and placements fairly simple. Not too much confusion as to where a leaf can go. And the main rule is if it can fit between the edges of one of these tokens here, then it is going to be considered connected. And that's a way in which you can use your points to your advantage. The tree here is great. Moving up on the tree is very simple and easy to understand. The symbols are straightforward. Hit a sun, gather a sun token. An acorn, an acorn token. A paw print, well, that's an animal. And moving along this track, getting to the end, the very top is going to score you those six points, which is important, and you want to do so. But not at the cost of anything else. You always have to kind of work together in this game um, in harmony with nature. Gathering animals, mushrooms, and placing your leaves correctly to move up on this tree and get the farthest as you possibly can. A small little thing about the game is if you are the first player in the game, there is a minor disadvantage. Perhaps the uh, animals pop up at the beginning of the game and in fact there are no duplicates and so you gather two of them and on the next turn, two new ones pop out and now there's a pair on the field, in which case your opponent can then gain an instant pair. And remember, trying to gather a set of three is very important in this game for pretty much everything. So there might be a cost to that. And yours might not pop up in time before the frost hits and you have to collect animals in. And so you're just kind of out of luck. It's not really your fault. It just happens on the occasion. And that's like my other minor little issue. Overall, the game is beautiful. The style, the story, the aspect of the tree with the leaves, with the squirrel working, with the animals, um, putting mushrooms on the leaves with your bonus actions, and everything has a point value, the game is gonna end close. And I mean close, close. Everybody's gonna be very, very close in score, and it's gonna come down to, to just a little bit in points. Any extra points you can score in this game is gonna be a necessity, and there's a variety of ways to score points, and always trying to work in harmony with everything in this game is gonna be really, really important. 
The quality of the game is excellent. Not only do all the leaves look brilliant, they look detailed, elegant, and unique, and function in a way which you can connect them to accurately make a beautiful sprawl of leaves at the end of the game, but they also represent different actions you can take. And placing in a specific area giving you a lot of actions for ones you don't want, compared to a smaller area for actions you do want, will actually present some unique, difficult choices in the game, allowing you to decide, is this where I want to place? Even though I get less actions, I might get actions I actually need, which will benefit me on the tree, or with animals, or new mushrooms. And so you have these kind of like difficult choices to make with the limited cards in your hand and the limited leaves you'll have in your hand. And even still, do I want to double up on a leaf? Losing an extra leaf card when I have only one left might be a very difficult decision to make, especially because you can score negative points in this game if you're not careful by not having leaf cards in your hand. Overall, the artwork, Quality, storytelling, and fun is all here. It's a puzzle game, it's a management game, and you're also kind of implementing this board where at the end of the game, you're gonna have a beautiful, vibrant leaf foundation that hits this board and it reflects the tabletop wonderfully. People will see this and be inspired to want to play and ask questions. And I think that's the best thing about a board game is if somebody walks by and they see that and they say, I wanna play that, that's a success in my book. That's how a game is gonna be uh, withstand the test of time. I think this is one of those games that just really does everything really well. It's clean, it's casual, with only a few minor flaws that I kind of found with it, but not enough to keep me away from it. It's a game I'm definitely gonna come back to and play some more. It's a game that as you play more of, you're gonna get better at. And it's a game that's really close in scoring, so you never feel like you did too bad, but it always feels like you did good, especially if you're the winner. Yes, Leaf is a recommendation for us. We'll give our seal of approval. It's a wonderful game by Weird City Games, and I highly, highly recommend it. I really, really enjoyed this title, and I hope you guys check it out. There's a link down below. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Leaf by Weird City Games. If you're interested, like I said, there is a link down below. Additionally, there's also a solo mode of the game. I didn't play it. I don't play solo mode games, especially puzzle ones, but I hope you do, and you can let me know in the comments below what you think about the solo mode if you enjoy games like this that have a solo mode. That's coming to be a little rich for me, considering the game I published was a puzzle game and I did in fact make the solo mode, so I don't know what that says, but either way, you can also go ahead and check out our website, unfilteredgamer.com. Blog posts, reviews, Kickstarter lists, and more. Our Instagram with new reviews of different games other than just our YouTube. And on Sunday at 6.30 p.m. PST, we play games just like this one here. On Whatnot, we do a stream on Thursdays at 5.30, where we sell games, talk about games, discuss games. It's a little bit of a different type of a show. And if you're interested, you can check out either one or both. Join our Discord as well. All right, guys, that's pretty much all I got for you this time. And as always, I look forward to dropping some leaves with you in the game Leaf next time.